blockchain is spurring a revolution in the way we create, record and trade value. Its benefits, security, transparency, efficiency, can be applied to areas as diverse as payments, capital markets and supply chains. That's why assets of all kinds are being tokenized on blockchains, making their ownership immutable, their provenance traceable and their use manageable. The potential is enormous, but every blockchain is complex and creates a different walled garden of connections and functionality. Today, the decentralized world of blockchain is made up of closed environments, limiting liquidity and leading to increased risk and lost opportunity. Every digital asset must be created specifically for each chain, demanding dedicated developer skills, which are hard to find, time-consuming to master and expensive to develop. Overledger Platform from Quant establishes a new benchmark for blockchain interoperability and ease of use. As a low-code enterprise-grade platform, Overledger empowers you to deploy, connect and develop on any blockchain quickly and simply. With Overledger, you can generate an interoperable digital asset with just a few clicks. Create secure smart contracts that can execute on any blockchain without having to hire a team of experts. And you can use its advanced APIs to integrate with your systems and manage your assets on multiple chains. We believe that the blockchain economy should be simple, trusted and future-proof. These are our principles and the genesis of Overledger Platform, the enterprise standard for building on blockchain. All right, so please smash that like, especially if you hold Jasmine. Let's jump into it and shout out to... Uh, Jesse of KAR Finance. I want to go ahead and show this to you guys. Um, but before I get into him, we're going to start off with the uh, outline of what we have in regards to Coca-Cola of all things. You're probably wondering, what in the world? Coca-Cola? Well, it makes a nice little example for you guys. So let's go ahead and play this. This is from a while back. And try to pay attention to what you see on the logos at the very end. Here we go. Smash that like. Thank you again for being here. Only about a minute. Let's play this. Konnichiwa, Centro Pay no Arisu desu. Kyo wa kantan ni Coca-Cola Amato no Jihanki kara digital no heika o tsukatte nomimono ga kaeru koto o omise shimashou. Mazu, Sairo Smart Wallet o download o shimasu. Soshite, shinamono o erandara QR code o scan shite shiharaimasu. All right, so you may be wondering about that, right? And the key thing is what you saw on the screen at the end. Silo, some people call it silo, um, and also centrality. So where am I going with this? If you're a long-time Jasmine holder, you already know where I'm going with this. There's a little bit more than what's on the surface that you were not aware of. Let's jump a little bit more into what we have for this outline. So I want to show you guys some key things. And, of course, I fast-forwarded to this uh, marker of this video. Um, shout out again to Jesse of KIR Finance, aka Keeping It Real Finance. And about one year and one month ago, he did report at this specific part of this video in regards to Jasmine Can It Scale? Who helps them get that jo job done in regards to scalability? Well, it's centrality. They provide this layer two scaling solution on Ethereum. Now, if it was a layer one, we understand with Ethereum that that's just not going to get the job done. And I would agree with a lot of people who would say, hey, if they're really trying to build for society 5.0, an Ethereum layer one is not going to get that job done. Right. Anyway, let's go ahead and play this. It's going to give you an idea of what he's talking about. He has this little spreadsheet example. Um, we're only going to play maybe about four to five minutes of this. Again, it's just at the key parts of this. And then I'm going to show you guys some more research that I have. Please smash that like. But if anything, it's going to help you alleviate maybe some of that fear you have for a long-term outlook 
in regards to scalability. Can Jasmine scale? My The answer is yes, but nonetheless, let's present it the right way. So let's jump into this. And again, give Jesse of KIR Finance a follow. He definitely deserves it. Here we go. So to say that Jasmine is a uh, blockchain project, it is, but... I don't know if that's necessarily the core here. I think the core technology is the Secure Guardian and the SKC, okay? So going back to DD Coin though, DD Coin is, is basically just a stable value marker. So if you think about it, the reason that they're using a stable coin, first of all, and again, this isn't really a foreign concept to introduce a stable coin. You know, just about every blockchain out there has a stable coin on it. Uh, because sometimes you need just uh, stable money, right? And I think the reason that they do that with Jasmine for this DD coin, why this idea has come about, is that let's say they did not have DD coin, okay? And so they're compensating users for their data uh, with Jasmine. Well, Jasmine is going to fluctuate up and down. And so for a company with um, people who have a strict corporate background from somewhere like Sony, I think it's going to be, it would be very difficult to track the actual value of data if you did not have a stable coin to compensate for that platinum data, okay? So I think that's that's kind of the, the most important piece of this is that from their side, they need to be able to accurately value the data. And in order to do that, they have to have a stable coin that is set to the Japanese yen, okay? Now, is this good or bad for Jasmine token? I think it's a good thing. And so with DD Coin, DD Coin, um, Hara has mentioned, and I've seen it in one or two interviews where they've talked about this, that it is fully going, it's going to be fully exchangeable with Jasmine. And so where will you exchange it? Well, we need the Jasmine wallet. We don't have the wallet yet. That's like one of the key things here that we need in this whole project is we need the wallet. Because what the wallet does is, you know, when users um, access that wallet, that is where they would also be compensated in DD coin. So if you were a user and you had a Jasmine wallet, you would have your Jasmine in there and you would have your DD coin. Now, your DD coin is um, equal to the yen, or you could exchange it then for Jasmine itself. And so I put together a little spreadsheet and I wanted to show you all. Um, kind of the way I view this, all right? So up top here, we've got uh, coin, Jasmine, right? We've got the blockchain, and then we got the purpose. So for Jasmine itself, it is, a, it is built on the Ethereum blockchain. So it is an ERC-20 token, which is how the vast majority of altcoins start is as ERC-20 tokens. Now, what's different and what's a little bit of a wrinkle into this whole thing is the partnership with centrality so centrality is their consortium chain is the way they refer to it right so this is their partner that they work with and why centrality well because shang guo who's on the team <laughs> used to work at uh, centrality okay so that i think that has a lot to do with this um but so centrality is a layer two solution so all that means is that Ethereum basically has a scaling problem. It has a gas fee problem. It cannot scale. The future uh, of any blockchain of technology period has to be interoperable and it has to be scalable. And uh, Ethereum in its current state is not uh, very scalable, okay? So because of that, you have layer two solutions that have come about. And for example, I've got Polygon listed here. Polygon is a layer two solution. So you put this on top of the layer one, which is um, the you know, current Ethereum blockchain, and you make it scalable um, for transactions. That's all we're doing is we're trying to increase throughput uh, transactions. Uh, any blockchain has to have throughput. They have to have, be able to transact. They have to be scalable. The, that's key, scalability, right? So... With the Jasmine coin, the way it would work is the purpose, first of all, is for investors. 
So anybody who's investing into Jasmi the project, you're going to buy the Jasmi coin, okay? Um, this is no different than investing in the stock market and buying stock. When you buy that stock, you're investing in the company and then the company can take your money and they can do whatever they need to do in terms of their research and development or whatever they're doing, right? So that's number one here. Number two, as I mentioned, it activates the future wallet. So we need this wallet. We don't have it yet. All right. Think about what Jesse just said. We need this wallet. We don't have it yet. What is the thing that we've been reporting on lately? The super wallet. So yet, in my opinion, that should come out by the end of the year. But again, I could be wrong. They could delay it. It just depends on the progress of that innovative super wallet. So again, this was his report, his gathering, as in Jesse of Keeping It Real Finance, KR Finance. By the way, follow him. Great content creator, deep dive researcher for Jasmine and other great projects. But he reported on this one year and one month ago. Fast forward to the present. Now enter in the next part of what we have for our outline. And with this, I'm going to share something that you may not have been aware of at all. And like what was mentioned was the topic of centrality. What is that all about? Why should it matter to you? And so on. And if anything, check this out. Before we get into this, I want to show you this from Vitalik Buterin of, obviously, Ethereum. So Vitalik, many years ago, has this statement, right? April 3rd, 2018, he states, we are not going to do 1,000 TPS, as in transaction per second. He says, I don't give a crap about 1,000 transactions per second. We have run in a highly controlled setup 1.33 million transactions per second. Now, come on, guys. Did this ever become, do we see anything from this? Unless I'm missing something, I have never seen this come into full fruition. We would have heard about this a long time ago. And if anything, all the, you know, the nonsense about high Ethereum gas fees that we cannot stand, right? If, you know, the, again, back in 2018, not even ETH 2.0 going from proof of work to proof of stake solved some of these things, right? So he says, I don't want that. I want everything on earth to be included. Okay. At the end of the day, some people... You know, we're saying, well, this is the past and so on. What about the whole thing with Jasmine? All right. Here's the thing. And back to Jesse of K, uh, Keeping It Real Finance. So on this one, he states, and I'll jump to the next page about this. This was back on 4th of July, Independence Day, a year ago. Jesse states how the Jasmine blockchain works. Jasmine's partnered with Centrality. We know that to create the consortium slash Jasmine blockchain, a layer two solution, remember that, on Ethereum, similar to Polygon. How many projects are there as we speak that has the same type of thing in which we need scalability, they're going to go with Polygon. You guys are probably not familiar as much as I am, and it's okay when it comes to a project that I covered from the beginning of my content creator journey, which is Clearpool. Right, but Clearpool obviously has this thing with Polygon because they understand that they need to be able to have an extra option for scalability, do they not? So it increases as in centrality. Again, keep in mind this layer two solution of scalability to 1000 TPS. Now, for some people, they're like, Well, I wish it could be a little bit faster. Okay, and I hear you on that. It says it lowers fees and makes the idea of Jasmine possible. Sometimes at the end of the day, it's not about you know, having a certain number in your head saying to yourself, well, this is where Jasmine is going to be limited in the future. But keep in mind, compared to where we're at now, right? I mean, are you really going to complain about going from, you know, some of these figures that we're going to show you here in a bit, which is this, look at this. Are you going to complain about, um, you know, where we at on Ethereum, 12 to 16 transactions per second to 1,000? Right. And I've heard the consistent recommendations that we all wish. Well, I wish that Jasmine would choose XDC to be their new blockchain. Uh, we even talked about, you know, and I even did a piece about it, did I not? I even retweeted this 
Um, I, we would love to see Jasmine go over to uh, Cosmos, right? That would simply make sense, especially with what Cosmos slash Adam is doing, over, you know, uh, their new stamp in Japan. All these things make sense. Now, we're talking about 1,000 TPS. Sounds very good. This is 2,000 TPS in regards to XDC. We understand that the average fee would be 0 0.00001, which is uh, four zeros and a one. Um, like I mentioned in the past, like, you know, uh, somewhat close to the price of Luna Classic token, not quite. You have finality in two seconds. Um, with Ethereum, it's 10 to 20 seconds. With BTC, it's almost an hour, 10 minutes to an hour, right? Too long. All right. Well, Max, that's XDC. Could you give me something in regards to it might be a little bit more closer to the transactions per second of, um, you know, centrality? Very good question, right? Jump over to this. Um, and this might be a little bit hard for you to see, but I didn't have any other examples that was ready because I was kind of pressed for time, but I did have a good outline for you guys. At the top, you see regards to scalability with Ripple's XRP, something we cover here quite often, 1,500 TPS. Look at the difference between that and like Bitcoin and Ethereum, like a night and day difference, right? So my thing is this, centrality, 1,000 TPS, right? It's not as fast as Ripple's XRP. And it's definitely not as fast as Zenfin's XTC, but it's significantly faster than Ethereum. It can scale. Well, are we limited just to that? The answer is no, and I'll get more into this. And this is, of course, on my own personal findings. And I do appreciate the research and the content, of course, that we're bringing to you from Jesse of Keeping It Real Finance. Now, I want to jump over to a little bit more of what we have. Here's another example. Um, you know, who doesn't know about Visa, right? Visa, 24,000 transactions per second. Ripple's XRP, 1,500. PayPal, 193. You, again, you, you know where we're going with this, okay? Um, a little bit more, and I want to share this with you. And basically, as reported five years ago, okay? And I'll show a little bit more about this. So Centrality partners with who? Who? X Sony. Yeah, head for decentralized app store, app store. If you forget anything I ever mentioned in this video outline, Remember, old Mr. Stanley, Max, said what? App Store. I'll even say it three times because usually that's how people remember. App Store, App Store, App Store. Just remember that. Okay. So New Zealand-based blockchain DAP platform Centrality has announced a partnership with China tech giant InfiniVision and Japan-based Jasmine specifically jasmine right founded by the former president of the sony corporation who is who mr kunitaki ando who also shared the stage with who steve jobs back in 2005 right the partnerships will connect centrality to asia's leading consumer brands including mickey d's aka mcdonald's in china and china's biggest retailer Balian group now I'm going to play this for you guys. It's only a minute and seven seconds, but it's going to give you a little bit of that visual perspective of why we're paying attention to this. Please smash that like. Here we go. Centrality is a blockchain venture studio based in Auckland and in five countries around the world. And we're all about making mass consumer adoption of blockchain applications happen. The way decentralized applications work is they involve a community of people that help build the software, run the infrastructure and create the rules about how that economy works. So it's not a corporate in charge, it's a community in charge. All of these things can be built into code. And that should work out to a situation where we have fairer rules in place and better reward mechanics between the value creators in an ecosystem. We want developers who are interested in building the next economy to come and talk to us and discuss how we can leverage the tools we've created to create new tokenized ecosystems and replace this, this avant-garde kind of old world, old generation of technology oligarchs. All right, replace the old technology, um, you know, the oligarchs and so on, right? Again, think about it, right? How are you going to do that? 
right? You got to provide some kind of a layer two scaling solution. They do that for Jasmine. All right, jumping into the next part of what we have, because we can't just end it right there. That wouldn't be right. So we're going to get more into what we have. And if anything, I want to show you guys this as well. And here we go. Um, it's in regards to Jasmine and centrality, like it says right here. So remember I was talking about the whole thing about this app store and so on? Well, here's another thing. When you guys watch that little brief commercial of that lady buying the Coca-Cola out of the modern vending machine, notice that she used a wallet. Now, we were on the topic, were we not, of the Jasmine Super Wallet. Well, keep in mind this. At the end of that commercial, it mentions specifically centrality and it mentions silo. Maybe I'm pronouncing it wrong and it's silo. Whatever the case be, that's not the point. The point is, like what it says right here, the silo app is available in the Apple App Store and it's quite nice. It says that this could be the eventual wallet that we will be basically using, earning, and spending for Jasmine. Is this the future super wallet connected through Silo? Well, what's a consistent thing I like to do for you guys? I like to connect the dots. So if I do connect the dots, to me, that would make sense. Again, we could agree to disagree, but that's the way that I look at it. It says it's just speculation. And again, you got to keep in mind that this is from over a year ago, but it would allow for transmission of, back to what Jesse was talking about, Jasmine tokens for low slash no fees over Centrali's blockchain rather than e-fees. Now, before we get more into this, some of you guys are saying, eh, Max, this is a nothing burger, man. I mean, I, I like you, bro, but I don't think so. You know, you cannot dismiss Uniswap and other decentralized exchanges where, let's face it, Max, we're going to get hit with high Ethereum gas fees. And I'd be with you. I got a little bit more in regards to that as well. I always put myself in your guys' shoes about how you answer things and what you think and so on because I've been there myself. I watch other channels sometimes, but, you know, at the end of the day, it's a great question. It says, for instance, another interesting tidbit, Jasmine Net. He states that he thinks if Jasmine is leveraging Centrally's blockchain, um, that they may need to spend SENS tokens or plug, right? And, of course, we've seen other references to plug before. He states, which could mean that when Jasmine takes off, so will SENS or plug or both, right? It's a win-win for all three of these. He doesn't know for sure, but both are very, you know, like on some of these exchanges, so on and so forth. Interesting plug is on, for instance, MEXC. And I know that you guys, some of you guys, not everybody, is aware of plug. That's not the point. The point is this. Let's jump into what we have in regards to this. And this comes straight from the medium. Check out what it mentions here. On this particular one, it mentions that enterprise blockchain solutions made simple with who? Centrality. But some of the key things, it's kind of like what you saw pictured before. Jasmine, we're looking for who? A trusted partner to put their business on the blockchain so of course they turn to centrality why would they do that again one of their key um i guess you could say uh big wigs over at jasmine has some specific connections to some of these guys this dates all the way back to japan a blockchain conference 2018 of you know in tokyo who do we see here some very familiar people. The gentleman on the far right is no longer part of the Jasmine team. He retired, and I will do a proper deep dive about him and why it's important. But who do you see in the middle? You see the former president of Sony, Kunitaki Ando. Who do you see on the second to the far left? You see Kazumasa Sato. We know that Kazumasa Sato had many of those Sony patents. And those patents are still as valid as they were then as they are now and going into the future. To get further into this, it states some key things about, you know, the Internet of Things, IoT, Jasmine mission, of course, to create an IoT platform that customers can use worldwide, all while maintaining control over their data, not giving it freely to Facebook, aka Meta, your Amazon Web Services, Google and so on that we take for granted, but it says they engage specifically with centrality to deliver blockchain solutions to make their uh, platform safe, secure, and easy to use. That's the bottom line. What business challenge was Jasmine trying to solve? Well, could it be some of that scalability? I think so. But 
look what's mentioned here. One of the most important things about data generated by IoT devices states that you have this whole thing about including personal data about users remains under the control of companies providing the IoT infrastructure. Jasmine engaged with centrality to integrate blockchain tech to their IoT platform so that individuals can basically keep their own data safe. And yeah, you better believe it. It's got to be secure. By partnering with Centrality, Jasmine was a better place to give control of data back to consumers and remove the liability of holding on to consumer or customer, I should say, information. But what about, you know, what about the whole thing about Centrality? What do they exactly deliver to Jasmine other than just like, a you know, a layer two solution? Well, that's a great question. For one, remember how we always talked about, you know, the SKC, the Secure Knowledge Communicator. Some of you guys have forgotten about some of this stuff, so it's all right. That's why we do these little refreshers, if you will. A customer support solution that is secured on a private blockchain ledger, which protects users' personal data and provides agents with verified information without storing customer information. Right. That's why they make a big deal of the Secure Knowledge Communicator. Remember how Jesse was talking about Smart Guardian, if you've been paying attention to this? He stated a few key things, but if you weren't aware of it, Smart Guardian is an automation system that secures home and lifestyle IoT devices to individuals' digital identities. And oh, by the way, they have a data marketplace. And that data marketplace would also do what? Link you to the whole concept of being able to monetize your data, unlike what Facebook and some other platforms don't have. Now, we understand that with Twitter, now known as X, you know, you can basically, uh, if you're a content creator, monetize your data, but it's not something that's openly available to everybody, right? States, a new way for customers to interact and utilize their data. Jasmine believes that data created should belong to the consumer. We know this, but the data marketplace specifically will offer customers the ability to earn rewards from the data they create while using the Jasmine platform. Again, when we get more of that mass adoption, you may not think that the concept of Jasmine on the surface sounds like it's going to be this worldwide massive thing, but you got to keep in mind, just because it doesn't work here in the United States with our narrative and our politics doesn't mean that it won't be a solution for the opposite side of the world. You know, we're called the West. They're called the Far East, right? It's a night and day difference when it comes to the culture. What centrality protocols basically do is they leverage Jasmine. How is it critical for Jasmine's tech stack? Great question. Jasmine's currently utilizing three services provided by Centrality, if you weren't aware of this. Um, for one, we mentioned Silo, Digital Identifier, Single Source, and Custom Blockchain Jasmine Net via, for instance, the Plug platform. Now, we talked about Silo earlier, just real quick about this. They are decentralized communication protocol. They underpin the secure knowledge communicator. This is the first silo use case of web to mobile decentralized communication. This means communication between customers and digital support uh, operators remains totally secure. And of course, your single source KYC identity protocol used to verify users and so on, but not to the degree where it's just like, what's the point of using this? Now, back to the topic at hand, and that is, you know, scalability. And on top of that, some people are wondering like, well, um, you know, the concept of layer one gas fees, right? Because of Ethereum, all great stuff. We'll get into that in a bit. I want to show you some of this that was posted from the white paper over at Centrality. And unfortunately, this is the biggest I can make it um, without basically um, chopping up the page too much where it's unreadable. All right, so I'm gonna get into this and you're gonna see some key things here. So it mentions on this part, despite the, the market growth, excuse me, and increased prosperity, the vast majority of traditional tech startups fail. That is true. There's lots and lots of failed startups, just like there's lots and lots of failed businesses that open up in what? Shopping plazas and so on, right? It says, even if they are well executed, right? True. Adam Smith's invisible hand is powerless against the tech giants. Their significant head start on data gives an application of AI the potential to increase the scale of inequality and reduce basic human rights to a free and democratic society. I mean, again, you know, we talk about Society 
you may not understand it here in the United States, but keep in mind a different narrative on the opposite side of the world. Look what also mentions here. Consequently, very few startups achieve scale, right? This is referenced in Centrality's white paper. Today's users are interacting with fewer applications. And I want you to remember this. Again, they're mentioning fewer applications and their expectations are high. It's almost impossible for a new startup to achieve the capability required to meet these expectations. Why is Max putting so much emphasis on scalability? Was Max trying to kick the can down the road and not address the big elephant in the room of scalability when it comes to Jasmine? No. But if anything, I want to give myself a more of a chance to gather the information in regards to scalability and deliver it to you guys of what is expected of a content creator who does research, right? Right. At the end of the day, if you have true scalability, what does that mean? Again, if you're a newcomer, it basically means this one thing. I myself need to have the same user experience as everyone else that's using the app or the platform that we're talking about. That's the bottom line. If it's only a select few people who have that experience, but others don't, then that creates a lot of problems. Throttling, lag, congested network. In the world of Web3, can't operate like that. So you have to have a scalable solution. As we get further into this, two key factors are working against market interest achieving scale. Very true. First, the number of digital startups out there is rapidly expanding, fragmenting user attention, capital, and technical resources. Secondly, bigger platforms have a huge lead in what? User data, and some of them do. Some of the big wigs like, for instance, Meta, aka Facebook, and so on. There's attention, capital, and resource, which enables them to either predict what's coming or copy very, very fast. Look at this statement. On average, good plans, people, and business succeed only one in 10 times. One out of 10? This is due to volumes of components that are critical to success. The best companies might have an 80% probability of successing at each of them. Even with these odds, the probability of eventual success will be less than 20% because failing to execute on any one component can torpedo the entire company. Here's the thing. Here's the bottom line. I think Jasmine already prepared long ago, many years ago, back in 2018, they knew what they were trying to achieve for the future. You got to keep in mind, these are former Sony executives. They have a legacy that they want to leave behind. And last that I've checked, they are very proud of the time that they put in with their service, not only to Sony, but the people of Japan. They understand that we are entering into this fourth industrial revolution. They want to not have their legacy tarnished. Again, it's Japan. They're all about that honor system. Individual events. Look at the probabilities of companies that have sufficient capital. So it's 80%. Management is capable and focused, 80%. But the point is the scalability issue. Going to the next part. Let's get back on the topic of centrality real quick. They are an ecosystem that supports each stage of the startup life cycle. It takes a human centric approach that uses to users, I should say, to interact with a range of different applications. Again, applications, one with very low friction. On top of this, this allows developers to create applications that leverage the combined scale of the ecosystem in order to beat the incumbent startup hurdles that exist today. So if you have a solution that's going to help you scale up at the inception or startup of your blockchain, hence Jasmine, you can understand why they partnered up with these guys. Since we're talking about blockchain real quick, SensNet, aka Centrality's ecosystem, was also designed with users at heart. It's focused on mass consumer use cases and increasing the general population access to the blockchain beyond simple currency and use cases like for instance btc which was a consistent problem with them they can't really you know they're not innovative they can't really scale that's one of the biggest problems this next part real quick you know providing an ecosystem through centrality helps blockchain developers circumvent the startup model by providing different applications to share the user pool the data pool, does this all sound familiar? Yeah, you better believe it does. The merchant pool and the content pool across the platform to overcome traditional, and listen to this kind of funny way of putting it, chicken and egg scale issues. This next part. SendsNet turns the traditional funding method on its head. 
since then is obviously centrality. Traditionally, when somebody invests money into a business, that money is used to build the tech from scratch. True. This often results in duplication of components that already exist elsewhere. True. Making it hard to scale efficiently without a huge investment. And this last part. With centrality, because we're on the topic of it, obviously. Their platform model is basically this. The blockchain development ecosystem can grow quickly to support everyday use cases. Entrepreneurs can get to market quicker with a higher chance of success. Applications can work together to gain scale, which will challenge incumbent platforms. That sounds pretty good. Aren't you glad that Jasmine already had all these crazy, you know, worst case scenarios or we need to have a scaling solution? They picked one many years ago, back in 2018, instead of waiting to now. How many garbage mean tokens are there where they hope for a future vision of utility and they never get there? Yeah, you better believe it. Let's get to the next part of what we have. Founded in 1996, fortunately the year that Tupac died, by the current chairman, Centrality has prided itself in growing through reputation for service, excellence, and commitment to delivering precisely, uh, precisely excuse me, the solutions its clients need rather than, listen to this, this is a good little tidbit, rather than selling tech just for technology's sake. Yeah, that's a good thing. I like that. That sounds good, right? Two decades on Centrality, or excuse me, in, in the two-decade existence of Centrality, listen to this real quick. Um, they are a cloud-first company. Why would Jasmine want to team up with a cloud-first company? Because they are a data solution, right? With the personal data lockers and protecting, you know, your or, you know, Japan or other areas of Southeast Asia's personal data. It says it's a Microsoft Solutions partner. Were you aware of that? Why would jasmine wants to partner up with somebody that not only is a microsoft solutions partner but also um understands some of these other key things right like why would they want to do that because they want to go with who has been proven or been around for two decades and be able to do it at what scale centrality is growing and we are delighting our customers i would agree and of course they want people to join up with them but back to this topic real quick and i know this is quite a deep dive but if anything i hope to god that if you are a big proponent and, and, and proud to be part of the jasmine army or the jasmine navy as some of you guys have pointed out do me a favor once this is officially published in the right recorded format that you not only just retweet it but quote the tweets and the tweet should basically say jasmine scalability solution solved that's what i hope that you take from this sensnet is now an evm compatible layer two blockchain set to empower the most exciting metaverse projects that will make their big moves what is jasmine also trying to do in the metaverse they're trying to make their stamp into the metaverse they cannot make their stamp or their, their name known in the metaverse that they don't have a proper scaling solution. Again, enter into centrality. Look at this. This was posted on April 4, 2022. EVM is live on mainnet. How many times have we been talking about EVM or you know Polygon, ZK EVM? Lots of EVM news, right? Devs can now easily deploy existing, listen to this, Ethereum smart contracts. What is Jasmine? An Ethereum smart contract, is it not? ERC-20 token. Look at the next part. DApps, decentralized apps, and tooling on Sends to take advantage of much more lower fees? Really? You are tackling the subject, Max. Yeah, you better believe I am. And enjoy the convenience of our runtime modules. Of course, you can learn more about this if you choose to go visit Centrality on Crypto Twitter. But the next part I want to join, or join, excuse me, get into is this real quick about this history, all right? Like I said, Centrality provides the tools. Again, guys, think about how many blockchains have proper tools. We talk about Stellar with Cubis. That's a massive underrated tool. This is Jasmine, right? 
This provides the tools to help developers bring their app to market with blockchain tech by providing capital, an open source library of tools. Again, just like anything, if you don't have the proper tools, even to build a house, build a blockchain, you name it, you don't have squat. Some other business tech partners include Lightning Lab, and you better believe it, Jasmine. They're proud to list Jasmine. They ain't afraid to list Jasmine. McDonald's even listed there. And they're headquartered in Auckland, New Zealand. Some of you guys tuned in tonight are from New Zealand. Very cool stuff. On the next part, this is some bonus that I just got not that long ago. I think I shared a little bit about this the other night. So for some of the naysayers are saying, Max, this all sounds great, but I don't uh, deal with centralized exchanges. Okay, I get that. Well, I don't think you do, Max. Trust me, I do get it because I have put myself in your shoes. Eh, you say that, Max, but you are against meme tokens and so on. And I hold and deal with uh, Uniswap quite often. And I'm telling you flat out, since I'm all about decentralized exchanges like Uniswap, I'm going to get hit with a massive ETH gas fee. All this deep dive research that you're talking about, this sounds great. But at the end of the day, I'm going to go to Uniswap. I'm going to enter in my wallet and I'm going to get freaking gorged like you never seen before with these fees. And you know what? I'd be with you. That's a great statement. Let's jump into this for a second. So did you know that Uniswap, not that long ago, has this report, the improved architecture and gas savings. In Uniswap V3, which we currently know, they can have this uh, thing about deploying a new contract for every pool. Again, remember what I mentioned earlier? I mentioned all those references about all those pools through centrality. There's a reason why I did that. Making creating pools and performing multi-pool swaps more expensive. In V4, we hold all the pools in one singleton contract, which will provide important gas savings. Gas savings. Gas savings because swaps will no longer need to transfer tokens between pools held in different contracts. You don't think that sounds bullish as all hell right there? Early estimates show that V4 reduces pool creation gas costs by 99%. 99%? So for one, this is huge for not just Uniswap. I mean, by all means, like if you see the opportunity on a pullback for buying some Uniswap coin, right? Uni, that's a great opportunity, especially at the height of this next bull market. But the point is everything that's tied into what we've seen with Jasmine. So if one of the key things and part of like the flood campaign, if you will, was, you know, I don't want to own Jasmine. It can't scale. It's an ERC-20 token. Mm hmm but it's also got a layer two solution with centrality. Ah, uh, you know, I've got Ethereum gas fees. Ain't nobody got time for that. Well, guess what? Let me tell you something. Uniswap V4, when this is implemented and fully ready to go for mainnet, being able to have this concept of this, you know, the gas fees slash 99% you know, it's going to be pretty awesome because Jasmine has that layer two solution. So, I mean, I think it's pretty interesting and awesome to say the least. Um, but if you're wondering if this is it, and I know I apologize. I want to get more comments, but I got to I'm on a roll right now. I want to jump into this real quick. This is a little bit more of that icing on the cake. You may think, well, you man, bro, you could just end it right there. I would have been good. There's a lot more. Not so much more. I'm going to bore you guys, but look at this. Remember how we talked about SKC earlier at the beginning? Remember how we talked about Smart Guardian also towards the beginning? Remember what Jesse was talking about from KRFS? Did you know that they have three main utilities? Maybe we talked a little bit about this, but this is a different explanation, and it's from Coindesk. For one, personal authentication and a registration which grant the use of blockchain provided by Jasmine, the allocated management of personal data, safety, and smartphone or blockchain, and offering users the ability to transfer and trace their own data freely. On top of that, Smart Guardian allows IoT devices to be easily and securely registered on the original blockchain network. On the original blockchain network, 
Users can then send and receive detected and measured information and send and receive commands for remote control. The SG also incorporates a dual structure of unique blockchain and distributed management storage. Think about this storage. Remember what Centrality mentioned earlier? They Their focus is on the cloud. Oh my God, Max, that's how you tie all this stuff together? Well, that's part of it, yes. Where data can be safely kept and managed. Personal data, of course, has real value. The goal is to give it back to the people, back to the people, and not have the vast corporations that currently benefit off of it. They are literally making a killing off of our data, just like all of them. Our garden makes a killing off of pasta. You know, it don't cost much for them to, you know, buy that pasta, right? They make like a 90% markup. The same exists in the world of data. Add that up for a second. Getting more into this. Introduce this. And to me, this is, in my opinion, the ultimate when it comes to a scaling solution. So just real quick before I kick it on over to this next part. For the naysayers, and there's going to be a few of them, there might be a few of you right now who are connected, who are saying 1,000 TPS is not going to get the job done for industri uh, industry, um, excuse me, um, uh, 5.0, excuse me, you know, when it comes to the smart cities and society 5.0 and the fourth industrial revolution, and I would agree with you, all right? But it's at least a big step forward, is it not? So what other ultimate of ultimate scaling solutions do we have? Well, if you know me well enough, you know where I'm going with this. And if anything, let's jump into this right now. Enter in quant. Now, I did have that video a while back and I got criticized about it and so on saying, you know, some people are like, oh, this is a nothing burger. Um, this is all speculative and so on. All right. So hear me out. This was published July 10th. Overledger reduces crypto exposure. Think about what's mentioned here. Let's go to the far right. And you do see Peter uh, Maririo Sons, if I pronounce that right. He's the CTO, Chief Technology Officer over at Quant. He says, quote, since we were on the topic of gas earlier, instead of having to hold cryptocurrency to pay for deployment gas fees, oh, I see where Max is going with it. Yeah, you better believe it. Instead of hold, having to hold cryptocurrency to pay for deployment gas fees, Overledger users can pay with platform credits, which are charged in fiat currency. Isn't there something very similar when it comes to Jasmine? But again, we're on the topic of gas. We're not going to go down that path right now. Basically speaking, this is cool stuff. Look what it says. And that basically is a common complaint, like I was mentioning earlier, for businesses building on blockchain solutions is the fact that public change chains charge gas or transaction fees to perform functions. Yeah, absolutely. That's what we're talking about. It. These are charged in cryptocurrency, which means that businesses have little choice but to hold crypto on their balance sheets to cover these costs. Absolutely. That's a headache not least from a risk and accounting perspective. As of today, over Ledger platform users will no longer have this problem when, of course, deploying tokens. Instead of having to hold cryptocurrency to pay for deployment gas fees, think about this, over Ledger users can pay with platform credits, which are charged in fiat. This new feature applies to all quant smart tokens. Oh, yeah. I remember Max talking about earlier about, you know, the ERC-20 smart contract token of Ethereum. Talks about base, flex, and vary and integrates seamlessly with the overledger token flow as seen below. All right, real quick. How is this all going to work? After creating your token, when you choose deploy, and we saw this on the demo, on Quant Connect, our users can see two options for deployment. For one, you can either deploy with MetaMask and deploy with a platform credits, for instance. But like it says, you can choose to deploy with credits and they will use your platform credits to see the associated cost before proceeding. This way you don't need to have crypto nor do you need to connect to a virtual wallet. Mm. So for one, 
if Jasmine, hear me out for a second, was never able to accomplish the concept of the super wallet, they can have a backup plan with quants over ledger. Now, will they ever do that? This is where I get some of the criticism. We'll have to wait and see. But with quant putting their stamp down in Japan with that connect to SBI that we reported on that crypto trifecta video of Jasmine, QNT, and XDC, you definitely kind of connect the dots on that one. Again, who is the plug? Who is the connect? Genki Oda. You better believe it is because of SBI and also because of Bitcoin. All right. So one thing I want to show you now is um, this whole part of what we have a little bit more from the outline. I know this is quite the outline. And again, I'm on a roll here. I just want to pound that home just that much more. It states basically last month, Science and Technology Magazine, New Science uh, Scientist covered the Overledger project in a story titled, listen to this, The Blockchain to Fix All Blockchains. This is reported from NASDAQ. The story emphasized the need for what? Data interoperability. What's Jasmine all about? Data? And it says technology across different blockchains that could play a role similar to TCP IP, which enabled the internet to thrive. Overledger, look at this quote, seems to be a straightforward extension of the original atomic swap idea, said Cornell University, and that's an Ivy League school too. Cryptocurrency expert Emin Gunasir, as reported in New Scientist, but instead of only supporting currencies as atomic swaps do, the Overledger works for any data that can be put on the blockchain. Any data. How's that going to basically work out? Well, I'm not going to get into all this about the ISO standard, but if anything, I'm going to share this part because it's worth noting before we wrap this up. Says secure and scalable implemented OAuth federated authentication standards. Think about this for a second, because Japan is all about the standards, and Gilbert Verdian wrote the standard of ISO TC307, enabling single sign-on for enterprise customers and implemented scalability and resilience updates for cloud infrastructure. Now, with Jasmine, their cloud infrastructure layer two solution is centrality. But if for any reason in the future that doesn't get the job done, or if anything, kind of look at it as like a NASCAR race, that's a pit stop, then they could have the option to go over to Quants over Ledger. And to me, that would be the utmost of the utmost, right? Would it not? Overledger 2.0 supports data transformation for payment transactions to, because some of you guys are wondering, well, does it mention Ethereum? Yes, it does. To BTC, Ethereum, and even Ripple. As we know, a lot of us are big up on Ripple. Plus, the new software development kit, version 2.0, is more lightweight with its data transformation functionality. Most moved in Overledger version 2.0. 2.0, excuse me, prepare service. And I love this part. Talks about, for instance, the signing of Ethereum and Ripple payment transactions, sharing an access token and refresh token using client ID. Remember with Jasmine, we we're talking about Smart Guardian earlier, being able to verify, for instance, client IDs. Why did I go through all this trouble to tie this all in for you guys? Because I want you to have a broader perspective of why i so bullish on this. This is a reason why both Quant and Jasmine are consistently in my top five. Client secret, Overledger UI, username, Overledger UI password. Gives you a little idea of how this all works. Gateways on the network, connectors on the network, tasks receive on the network. Last but not least, Overledger allows new types of applications because you better believe with Jasmine, they're trying to get those applications going on in the future, are they not? By breaking down DLT silos with Quant's patented cross-DLT technology available via REST API, Overledger provides a range of powerful cross-DLT transaction types. This allows applications to easily access, update, and move, yeah, you better believe it, data and assets held on all, not just some, all the DLTs and blockchain customers that use to operate their business. Very, very bullish in itself. All right, almost done to the closing part. 
Got to pound this home just a little bit more. We were on the topic of smart contracts. The new release of Quanta Blockchain Gateway introduces just that, smart contract creation. How was that so? On that update from February of 2022. And like it says, Quant, a provider enterprise grade interoperability for the secure exchange of information, digital assets across any network. Doesn't matter if it's just ETH, you name it, any network. Platform protocol announced, newly announced, excuse me, a new release of its Overledger blockchain gateway, which provides and gives you numerous examples. But the point is, you know, it provides these solutions. Smart contract platform announced today that they have agreed to uh, combine their unique blockchain-based tech to eliminate a key barrier to development. You know, again, will Jasmine eliminate some of the their future key barriers of development by being limited to 1,000 TPS? I'm just saying. I mean, if we're all about being proponents of preparing for the future of that generational wealth and so on, we better hold our key projects accountable. And if anything, work together as a community to share the info. That's just the way I look at it. All right. Um, if you were having some doubts, this comes straight from Google. And that is basically this. If you're like, I don't understand the whole thing of smart contracts. On blockchain, the goal of smart contract is to simplify business and trade between anonymous and identified parties, sometimes without the need for a middleman. Now, in closing, I want you to remember this part. And I know that I did quite the deep dive tonight. I get that. The key word here is middleman. Remember what I said in regards to middleman. Let's jump over to here. Oracle blockchain platform explained through interoperability. Cross ledger, and look at the top right. This is a screenshot from a, a lecture from a long time ago. Cross ledger transaction integration over ledger solution from quant networks, uh, quant networks available for OBP deployed in OCI. Middleware, think about this. <laughs> That enables developers to write clients that interop across OBP, Corda, Quorum, Ethereum, Ripple, Bitcoin, Stellar, IOTA, you name it. As we know, IOTA is another great one for Internet of Things. thought that was a great little reference right there. This this one as well. I, I just I, I know this is extended, but I got to pound it home that much more, man. What's the solution with Overledger? The first blockchain operating system to enable development of multi-chain applications. Overledger has the ability to unlock, distribute value and applications across current and future blockchains. Current and future. Jasmine better darn well prepare for that future. I think they they are. I think they already approved that. They prepared for the future that nobody's even talking about. Well, Jesse, shout out to him. He talked about last year. But they prepared for this in 2018. So if they prepare for scaling, a layer two scaling solution in 2018, why wouldn't they prepare for the ultimate one, Overledger? Why? Because they're an agnostic platform that connects the world's networks to blockchains and it ensures you are not limited to, to any single vendor. Remember at the very beginning of this outline, we talked about that vendor. Let me give you an example of what a vending machine Overledger is the only platform that facilitates the development of decentralized multi-chain applications. Multi-chain. The only platform. Why do you think the Bank of International Settlements shows it? Why do you think Augustine, the head honcho over at BIS, shows Quant through Project Rosalind? And the Bank of England. If you're not owning q and I'm just being honest. I don't, I, don't, I don't know what you're doing. If you're not owning Jasmine, I don't know what you're doing either. This is my own opinion. Some people don't agree with it. I didn't mean that being disrespectful. All right. This is like one last one. This is this is the final one. I don't keep saying this is one last one. This is it. It is undeniable that the potential of QNT appears to be massive. True. The blockchain network is growing in all directions, and Quant wants to be the one big connection between all blockchains. But not only just that, Quant offers support for so-called and look at this listen to this multi-ledger tokens mlts these are digital assets 
but are backed by real assets. So banks can easily use quant to trade digital currencies without being tied to a specific blockchain. Why are you pointing this out, Max? I'll tell you why I'm pointing this out. For all the talk that I've been doing for the last many months about the whole focus of what's going on in Japan for the domestic and foreign stable coins. So we, the, the, the foreign stable coins, USDT, Tether, USDC, Circle, have been, for instance, unbanned. But the point is this. The point is those domestic banks, here's your plug, here's your connect.